In this video I'm going to be putting together a kit. It's this Stirling engine and it comes from this company here in the UK. The idea for this was sent to me by one of the patrons to the channel who thought this might be a suitable subject to feature in a video. So I went on their website and I bought the one that I like the look of the best. These things aren't cheap though. They start at £86 and they go up to £150. The model I chose cost £148. Now you don't have to buy them as a kit, you can get them pre-assembled, but the difference in price is only about £10 or so. So really the reason people are buying them as kits is because they enjoy putting kits together, not really to save a lot of money. Now the first thing you see when you open the box is a card telling you that you need to download the assembly instructions. So you'll need to have access to the internet, you'll need to have something you can read them on as you're assembling the kit. They do come in the form of a PDF, but you don't really want to print it out because it's 80 odd pages long. It has a lot of nice graphics and detailed information on there. So it's the kind of thing that really you're better off reading off a phone or a tablet as you assemble the kit. You will need to provide your own rubber band, a crosshead and a flathead screwdriver and three mugs. I'll explain what that's about later on. Right now I've got to give a warning up front that this video features graphic images of close-ups of my fingers. Yeah, you're thinking, well, why is he mentioning that? It's because I get quite a lot of complaints from people telling me that they don't like the look of my fingers. Well, they're the only ones I've got, and they're the ones that I've got to be assembling this with, so there's not much I can do with that. So I'm afraid if you don't like the look of old man's fingers that have been pulling things apart and getting cuts on them and using isopropyl alcohol and taking all the moisture out of them and getting crispy and all that kind of stuff, then please turn off this video now. But for the rest of it, I'm going to be using these hands to assemble this kit. First thing, stick this metal thing into the base using the container as something to hold it here. So don't throw that out. Now the next thing, getting the plastic coating off this acrylic. They don't all come with acrylic. Some of them come with sort of copper cover bits that you have to take sticky stuff off. But same idea, got to remove it. I'm doing it with a bit of tape on here. Now this is a suggestion that a couple of people mentioned on a previous video where I put that clock together. They said, why don't you peel off that stuff with tape? And sure enough, it works. So good suggestion. So thanks to those people. I didn't know that tip before. Unfortunately, this one was refusing to get going. So I thought I'll just pick the edge of it to get it started and ended up breaking my thumbnails. So that's not going to look pretty for the rest of this video. And notice the plaster on the other finger. On the other hand, I cut my knuckle while I got the tripod out. So perhaps I'm just unlucky, but I think it's more the fact that I do things with my hands, you know, taking things apart, putting things together. And it's inevitable that you'll get a bit of damage like this. I think I'm quite lucky. I've still got all my digits. Anyway, let's carry on putting this together and I'll talk about fingers. I was wondering whether I should have a bit of background music going on in this video. You know when people assemble things they usually have a bit of music playing. I don't know if I'm a bit odd by not doing that. But anyway we'll move on. Here's where the mug comes in. You rest the thing on top of the mug and product placement. I'm going to do that here. And then these brass pins go through all the holes on the outside. Because there's quite a few of these I'll just skip to the end of this. I'm trying to keep this thing as brief as possible whilst showing the whole assembly process. But I don't want to keep you here too long by showing you the bits that are repetitious. Now that bit of blue stuff goes on the top. The idea is I flip it over and I put it on top of these two other mugs which aren't product placement. Believe me, Starbucks aren't paying me for this video. It's just the only other two similar sized mugs in the cupboard. So the idea is you flip it over and oh, one of the brass pins has fallen out. And the reason for that is because the bit of blue stuff that's on the diagram only has a hole in the middle for that rod to go through. Whereas the one that was in my kit has a long slot in the middle which means that the brass pins are either side of that are falling through there. So I've just put a bit of tape on top of that so that I can do this part again. So the only reason it's going on there is just to flip it over and stop all those pins falling out. So let's just flip it upside down. We've got it this time and now we can start working on the other side of this. Now as I'm assembling this there are various pieces of acrylic like these chamber walls which need to be kept clean so there's no fingerprints or dust on them and I am cleaning those as I'm going along. It's just I'm not going to show it throughout the whole video because it's not a very interesting thing to watch someone cleaning pieces of acrylic but trust me it is happening off camera. Now these two chamber walls have a ridge at either end into which you stretch one of these rubber o-rings. Once you've got those o-rings in place being careful not to knock them off again you pick a chamber up put it on one side of the section that we've already assembled it goes between the chamber pillars as they call them in the instruction booklet so one on either side and then we put the displacers in those now those go a particular way up according to the instructions it's this way and those are placed one in either side and then the whole thing sandwiched together with the other piece of acrylic on the top. 
Now because the base on my particular kit is made out of acrylic, the screws that are provided are made out of plastic because it closer matches that colour. I suspect if you'd got one of these with a brass base, you'd get a set of brass screws. Now, of course, this video doesn't run in real time. It's been squashed down quite considerably. It took me approximately two hours to shoot this one, to put this kit together whilst filming it. A lot of that will be down to the fact I have to reposition the camera in between shots. I think if I was doing this without the camera, it perhaps would have taken me an hour for the first one. I'd imagine I'd get quicker after that as well, once I get more familiar with it. But here we go, we've put all those screws in there now. Let's move on and put one of these chambers on here. Now these are beautifully made. They've got a brass base on them and that's a glass tube on there. And again, we're putting little O-rings into each of these. We have to be careful that these go inside the ridge in there. They don't stick out because those again have to be screwed to the base of the thing and we don't want to pinch that little bit of rubber. Now it's easier if you flip this upside down when you put these in here, otherwise that ring is more likely to fall out. The holes that are in that acrylic base have a thread already in them, so it's just a matter of tightening those up, making sure you're not cross-threading them. Now moving on to the next part, which is putting the T-bar carriers into that central column. Now there's a front one and a rear one, You've got to make sure you get them the right way around. Once you finger tighten those, you can then tighten them further using the Tommy bars. Now the Tommy bars are just metal bars. Those go into a hole in either side and it just enables you to get a little bit more purchase on there so you can make sure that it's nice and tight. Now you have to be careful not to mix those Tommy bars up with the gland stems. That's what I've got here, a gland stem and the gland that's being slid up and down it. The idea is you slide the gland up and down the gland stem a couple of times just to make sure there's no debris in the center of the gland and then you get the gland stem and push that through the acrylic into the displacer in the base you just have to push it in lightly to start with now we've got the gland we have to put a rubber o-ring around both of those as well to make sure those are airtight same as the last one make sure the o-ring doesn't sit outside there and then slide it over the gland stem and again screw it into the ready-made screw threads that are in that acrylic base. Oh, and if you're wondering what that elastic band was for, well, it's used for sections like this. You can put your elastic band around the components. It just enables you to get them a little bit tighter than you could if you were just using your fingers. Now, this is a really precision made kit. Just look at the size of these things. These are ball race bearings. And if you look inside here, you'll see tiny ball bearings that are there just to give the whole thing a nice smooth movement, but really tiny. Anyway, you place one of these either side of that central pillar. Once you've got them in there, if you push them, you'll feel a nice click, which means they've been held in place. So this is the flywheel and beautifully made it is too. And that attaches to the hub and axle. And you can see you can only put this one way around because it's got the countersunk screw holes, but also because those three screw holes are asymmetrical. So you've got to spin it around so you can see all three things line up. And then once you get that right, you just tighten it up with the three screws. So once you've got that together, you put it onto the central column through those bearings that we put in before. And you can see once you've got it through there, how smoothly everything moves. It does, however, still, of course, need to be secured from the other side, and that's done with these two things. We've got a crank and a screw which goes into a hole on the side of it, and once that's in position, you then place it over the axle on the flat plane, and once you've got that on there, just tighten it up. Once it's all in place, you're supposed to be able to spin that flywheel, and apparently it will keep spinning on its own for minutes. If it doesn't keep spinning that long, then just loosen the crank a little bit just move it a little bit away from the rear so there's a bit of play in there and then tighten it up again and once you've done that it should spin freely enough now every time i put a kit together i always find there's one bit where i go a little bit wrong and it's perhaps because i wasn't concentrating enough anyway that's the part in this video that's about to happen now i'm assembling this section here putting these three parts into the back of the crank and these are the three parts that i've got here and i've put them into the back of the crank now did you spot what i did wrong there well if you didn't i'll show you in a second but first i'll put the two bearings into the t-bar one goes into the front one goes into the rear by the way these ball race bearings have to be a certain way around the sealed side faces out anyway once they're in that t-bar the t-bar can go onto that central column making sure that the crank goes through the hole in the top and then it just gets tightened up with one screw 
So here's the part where I found I'd done something wrong. I've got four of these metal things, these are called conrods, and I've got three plastic things to go in them. Those are called conrod bushes. The reason I've only got three is because the fourth one was the one that I put in the back of here. I should have put a metal one in there. They're the same size, which is why I got mixed up. If I'd read ahead in the instructions, I probably could have avoided that, though. Anyway, it's only a simple matter of taking it out of the machine, swapping it for one of the metal ones, putting that back in there, and now I can get on and put the other ones onto the device. But it's just something to bear in mind if you are putting one of these together, that those could be mixed up. In fact, I do a little bit of a thing wrong here. I put these plastic conrod bushes on all the conrods and have them all facing the same way. There's two of them that are supposed to face the other way, but I'll sort that out in a moment. I'll put two of these on the machine now though, they go through the hole in the gland stem and then it attaches that up to the end of the T-bar and once you've got that one screwed into there you just do the same with the one on the other end. It's at this point you start to feel that the machine is really coming together now, it really wants to move on its own but we've got a few things to do yet and the first one is to push down those gland stems into the displacers using the end of a flat edge screwdriver, you push them to the bottom on both sides and that means that the displacer is carefully balanced between the two pieces of perspex it doesn't actually touch either one it just goes up and down but just stops short of the top and bottom of that chamber so that's one side of the machine almost done we're now moving to the other side doing a very similar thing putting a bush on top of a bearing and putting that onto the other side of that wheel and this time of course I'm doing it with the right metal bush on there and then we're putting the two bearings into the other t-bar and putting that onto the other side of the machine just like we did before so now i'm returning to those conrods that i'd assembled the wrong way around before where i got ahead of myself i need to take the screws out and put them in the other way around so the hook faces the opposite direction and now i've done that i can then put those into these pistons and the pistons once i've got those through the hooks on them go into the two glass tubes on this side of the machine and of course each one of those is attached to either end of that t-bar with a screw and with that, the assembly is done. There are no parts left in the box. I've just got to give it a quick look to check everything is nice and straight, and it looks fine to me. So let's try it out. Now, a Stirling engine runs on heat, so I've boiled some water, put it in this mug, put the Stirling engine on the top. You've just got to wait a couple of minutes for the bottom of it to heat up, and then you can spin the wheel, and fingers crossed, it should carry on moving. Now it was looking a bit touch and go there for a minute but I can see it is now starting to move under its own steam or I should really say its own power and I'll explain how it does that. All Stirling engines operate on a difference in temperature. On this one it's the difference in temperature between the top plate and the bottom plate which is getting heated up by that mug. Now when that large displacer disc is at the top of the chamber the air is at the bottom and when air gets heated it expands so when the mug expands it by heating the bottom plate that drives the piston up that's inside that glass tube which pushes on that t-bar which turns the flywheel and the flywheel's pushing down the displacer on the other side which is letting cool air above the displacer because the air moves around the outside of that displacer disc moves to the top so the warm air moves to the top gets cooled by the top plate which also helps to push down the piston on the other side which helps to move the flywheel and the whole thing just carries on like that it's basically the difference in heat between the top and the bottom which is getting this thing to move of course you need to start it off manually but once it's going it'll just keep going and the machine can also operate in reverse. By that I mean if the top of it is hotter than the base, then the machine will operate. It'll just spin in the other direction. I've got mine outside here. I'm spinning the wheel to the right and it says, no, hold on, we're going to spin to the left this time. The reason being is because it's getting heated up by the sun. This solar model has got a clear top on it and that enables the sun to get through to the top of the chamber and hit the top of those displacers which has been coloured black and that means those absorb heat better so the power of the sun is now powering my Stirling engine. And you really don't need that much heat difference to power one of these. You could power it just from the heat of the palm of your hand as long as you're in an environment where the air temperature is a little bit different to your body temperature. But I think the best place to power one of these is by putting it on top of something like a set-top box. And despite the fact that this is a modern set-top box and no doubt has to comply with all sorts of energy rules, 
even when it's in standby, it still puts out enough heat through that top plate to power this Stirling engine. It just shows you how much energy gets wasted by these devices. Now, if you're thinking, oh, I could use one of these to charge my phone up or power something else. Well, no, you couldn't because it's very carefully balanced. It's a very precision made piece of equipment and you couldn't just stick a pulley on this or something. It wouldn't have enough power to do that. It's just got enough power to keep itself going. But despite that fact, I'm glad that there's finally something good to watch on Sky tonight. Just have a listen to this for a moment because it does make a little bit of a noise and I thought you might want to know what it sounds like. So not an unpleasant sound and quieter than some clocks, although it does sound a little bit like a clock that's running a bit too quickly. So you could just put it on a shelf and have it as a, a decoration, an ornament, until you wanted to get it off there and put it on top of something to demonstrate to someone. It is quite a nice looking object in its own right. Now, if you want to get hold of one of these, well, I'll have links to the official website in the video description text box. They're in the UK, and I'll also have links to them on eBay. One thing, if you look around their website, you'll find quite a lot of them are out of stock, either in the kit form or in the fully assembled version. You have to toggle between the two. It seems like the fully assembled ones, there's more of those than there are of the kits. One thing you might want to do is go to their eBay store if you're shopping internationally it's probably easier to get it through there and of course if you're looking on eBay they'll only list the products that they've currently got in stock at the moment. So there you go it's not a cheap kit but it's very well manufactured and it's good fun to put together as well and you get something interesting to put on the shelf at the end of it. But that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching.